What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. Okay, not real, well kind of an indie game in all honesty. So this has the Games Workshop sanction to it, which means that it's kind of not. But at the same time it's done by Slytherin, which is a pretty... They're a pretty reliable indie developer of strategy games. A couple months ago they gave us a mission or two that we were allowed to play to sort of show off the early part of the game. But Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, we actually have access to the whole game now. So we can check that out today, and that's exactly what we're going to do. If after watching this, you think to yourself, Yeah, man, I want to purge some Xenos. Then you can absolutely do that. I'll have a link for you down below in the description. Aside from that, you'll also find a link to my Twitch stream, my Twitter, all my social media stuff. All that ancillary stuff. So let's go ahead and we will start a new campaign and let's see what's different from the preview, shall we? Now uh, we'll put it on Astartes difficulty. In this game we are going to be playing as the Blood Angels, which are a chapter of the Space Marines. And we are currently fighting against the Tyranids, which are an endless horde of space bugs that just cruise around in massive swarms in space, just consuming entire systems and incorporating their genes to make the horde stronger. And so anyways, let's go. Time flows in contradictions since the invasion. There's an unexpected slowness in the aftermath of an impossible victory. A languid sweetness of air, tasted by the hapless victor. And yet, I also feel the turning of change, and the accumulated minutia that falls to the survivors. Corpses to be burned, fortifications to be rebuilt, neophytes to be blooded. Regardless of our losses, we are the angels of death. And we are always prepared for war. Not that these are concerns for the fledgling Primaris right now. Balfora is an unforgiving tutor. Dante says that you are blood angels. Prove it. Show me that the blood of the great angel flows within your veins. Your yeah, orders. dude. Gang gang Gwinius and all that. All right. I like the way that actually, if you look at the setups of like the map tiles, it actually looks like a tabletop setup. I sort of dig that. It sort of looks like some of the little Forge World pieces that you can get for putting on top of a game board. Uh, so if you've never played Warhammer 40k before, what is Warhammer 40k? Warhammer 40k is a tabletop strategy game where you build armies that have point values and you play them against your friends who also have armies. Uh, Warhammer 40k is known for being grimdark. It's kind of like one of the true grimdark settings outside of like Conan the Barbarian and, and a couple other selected spaces inside fantasy and inside sci-fi media. Uh, it's heavily, heavily inspired by Heinlein and, you know, a bunch of other random sci-fi writers. But at the end of the day, everything is awful. That is the subtext of Warhammer 40k. Everything is terrible. Uh, humanity has devolved into this massive fascist empire that effectively just goes throughout the stars exterminating aliens because every time we tried to be nice to aliens, they murdered us and something went wrong. And so anyways, we are very untrusting of everything in space and we think that mankind has a destiny to rule the stars and thus everything is meant to be purged effectively. Uh, it's full of these guys right here, these bugs that want to eat everything. It's full of orcs that want to fight everything. It's full of like dark Eldar that want to do all kinds of things that I would have to bleep out if I put inside of here. Truly a setting that really doesn't have any good guys. Like, everybody is the bad guy in Warhammer 40k. It just depends what bad guy you want to play as. And so we are playing as the Blood Angels. They are a chapter of the Emperor's Space Marines. Uh, for the uninitiated people that don't know Warhammer 40k, genetically engineered super soldiers that go out and they deploy into the hottest hot spots in the galaxy to bear the brunt of the most brutal combat. And so anyways, around here we've got a couple of different units. We've got some aggressors. Uh, these guys look like they've got Terminator armor on or something. I don't know, dude. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't messed around with uh, Space Marines in a really, really, really long time. I was always more of an orc guy. I'll be honest with you. Orcs and Imperial Guard. Uh, but anyways, we've got a bunch of bog-standard Space Marines over here. Uh, they have a bolt-action rifle. In the bottom left, you can see their unit card. It's comprised of the five guys that are inside of it. Each of them has their own individual HP. Uh, it's got their armor, which reduces the damage taken from enemy attacks. We've got movement points 
points right here, which is obviously how many squares that we can move around. We have our action points, which is how many activities uh, we can take part in per turn. It's mostly shooting and screaming and being like, For the Emperor! For Sanguinius! G -g 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 -g. Like, it's, it's mostly going to be stuff like that. Just fair, fair warning. Uh, dialogue in Warhammer 40k is largely limited to, like, let us kill that thing and say it in Old English speech. Mayhaps we shall reposition, brother, and, and things of that nature. I'm going to move these guys up. I don't know why my sergeant and my assault marines are, are so far out of position, but I'm going to try to get them into position because I don't like where they're at right now. If we had a little bit more movement, we could jump in and maybe chainsword these guys, but unfortunately we don't. Yes, I said chainsword. We have literal chainsaw swords. A fairly, fairly standard and frequent weapon in the world of Warhammer 40k. Uh, we can fire at these Hormigants over here. We got a 52% chance to hit. That doesn't seem that great, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, this little grouping over here might survive the long term. Ooh, nice little crit right there. Yeah, there's still a couple of them up, but I think their ability to deal damage is going to kind of be irrelevant uh, we have these aggressors down here I feel like these guys are probably going to be the linchpin of our strategy over here what's going on on this side oh okay I get what's going on these are just little tooltip synopsis things cool uh, I'm gonna hide that because like I'm aware of the units that I have uh, these guys over here they've got a couple of fun things that I think you're gonna like they have bolt storm gauntlets um, bolt storm gauntlets are exactly what they sound like they're gauntlets that fire a storm of bolts uh, we've got the frag storm grenade launcher also one of those fun little tools that you always find yourself wanting to use even if it's not advised and then we've got bolt storm gauntlets over here which i think we just like punch them with the gauntlet these guys also have kind of an interesting ability and i don't see it like noted anywhere but they have an ability where when they get attacked uh, they return fire basically um, they well they don't return fire they preempt the enemy's attack in like slow motion john wick bullet time mode and so anyways, I don't know where that's noted at, but that is a thing that these guys do. Uh, we'll go ahead and fire our bolt storms at these dudes. It's going to be rad. Oh yeah. It's going to be extra spicy and satisfying to fire the bolt storms. We have an option with these dudes. Uh, we can unify up over here and we can kill this unit so that they're no longer a problem. Or we can thin out this unit over here. I sort of want to thin these guys out. Like, the less units they have, the less damage they're going to deal when they come into us. And, like, it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to get an attack. So, at this point, it's about, like, limiting the amount of attrition that we're going to take. And how many of them do we kill? Not enough. Only two of them. So, I, I regret my decisions. I regret all of my decisions. They were all a terrible idea. Can he actually make that shot right there? What? I was gonna say that feels really unlikely to me like I just I, I don't feel like he can make that shot right there it just it didn't feel like a shot that would be made like technically he could do it but like is it really going to be effective fire you know what I mean uh, 10 HP down off of one of my Marines right there that's perfectly fine they're also moving somewhere else to do something uh, we're getting big attacked right here so that's gonna be the first major problem our blood is on the soil but then again we are the blood Ravens and so you know it, it stands to reason did you get them all oh there's still one up man that means I gotta oh no there's another one okay so they're coming up out of the fog right now to mess with me they want the smoke. Oh, they didn't get the bolt storm right there. That's a bummer. They got critted too. Yikes. Okay, we got to clear this out. This needs to be like handled. So you guys are going to be my contingency force over here. Uh, I did not want the... I thought I clicked the, uh, the old... Uh, that's fine. As long as they're dead, I don't care. I thought I clicked on the, the chain sword though. Uh, you guys... So they're out of range. What if I move to Mia? And then after carefully moving Mia. Oh, they can only do that if it's within two tiles. Okay. Well, then you guys jump in over here. These guys are built for melee and precision strikes. So, like, they'll probably take a little bit of a scuffing over here, but they'll be fine. Uh, you guys go ahead and start picking on these dudes right here. 
There we go. So that squad's down. You guys pull up on this side, and what I'd like for you to do is finish off this little squad of Hormigaunts right here. I mean, it's not even really worth the attack, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm sort of curious if they can make the shot from over here. I don't know what their range is looking like right now. They can indeed squeeze off a round right there. So go ahead and do that. Give them a little bit of that old flanky spanky fire. They've done a really good job with the sound effects and the music of the game. Uh, they tend to fall into that wormhole when it comes to Warhammer 40k. Is either it's like heavily industrial or it's all like Latin sounding like woo woo, like cathedral music in the background. That's how I do. It's woo woo mu It's woo woo music, dude. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, you guys bolt storm these dudes up. I would like for them to be gown. Yeah, Bolt Storm Gauntlets. Don't you just love them? Got to go down to Ace Hardware and pick up a pair for myself. That's some good stuff right there, dude. Keep those uh, pesky Ormagants off your property, dude. You'd be like, this is my property. You're not allowed out, sir. What you doing out there, Ormagant? What you doing out there? All right. Uh, I don't think we really have too much more left to go. So I'm going to, yeah, just overwatch everybody that still has an AP left. And we'll just chill. Oh, that's not good. My boy is getting ran on. This little this little group of squatties over here is having a rough day. Now we got to figure out how we want to pull other people across too. Ooh, I don't like how they just like spawn them on the edge and then they get a free kill. Like, that's kind of weird. Like they should uh, maybe they are. I don't know. They should be like predeterminately placed around though. And it's kind of like weird that they keep getting. Can I can I like get out of here? Ah, there is a zone of control. That's what I wanted to verify. Okay, we now know that there is a zone of control. Uh, they are fully overwhelmed. We need to start bringing some real force against these dudes over here. But victory is no longer assured because of that little, that little bit of experimentation that I just did. I wanted to see if there was zones of control. There are indeed zones of control. Uh, let's bring you guys down to here. Like, I feel like I should have been able to, like, see them. I don't know. Like, the last couple waves have come from, like, basically off camera, and they get to start their turn getting a free hit because their movement is so large that they can close the gap. And I don't know if I'm, like, a massive fan of that. Uh, let's see. Enemy is out of range. Okay. Well, I guess keep moving forward, even though it might be a mistake. We are the Blood Blades of Skyfall. I mean, honestly, having them, like, waiting and letting them come to me is probably the way to do this. The eh, sure. No right Squeeze off a couple of caps at him. Maybe he'll actually kill something. So those guys have already fired their shot with you. Will be fast. Yeah, you pull in and reinforce them, I guess. My fury will be fast. There we go. My man's got the lift off. He's made touchdown over here. Now he's got to decide what we want to do with him. I mean, technically, he can't get into range for the chain sword. Well, maybe he can. I thought I could combine the chain sword into like a charge attack. That's what I was hoping I could do. Oh uh, yeah, chain sword him up, dude. Nice. I feel like that was more effective than the last time I played. Like, I feel like the last time I played this, the chainsword only hit, like, one guy inside of the squad. And so, like, it felt like it was only useful for dueling for me. But I'm actually pretty happy with the way that went. I'm not disappointed at all. I don't know if we have a shot from right here. We do indeed have a shot. Go ahead and pick off one of them, then. Only got to land a couple hits right there, and then we'll end the turn. Hopefully no more of them spawn from off screen. Oh, that was pretty dope. Dude, he's like shooting them out of the air right now. Cool. I do like that pistol reaction shot. That's actually a really, really cool effect. It's fun to look at. Oh, good. They're spawning way back behind us. That's fine. At least that gives me like a turn or two to sort of like figure out what I want to do here. Yep, just give him the old fatality. And then we'll bring these guys back up. We got two enemy squads remaining. And they are undoubtedly going to close with us very soon. Affirmative. Go ahead and get the healthy squads over here and make like a firing line. 
We'll overwatch you. We're going to overwatch you. If you don't know what Overwatch is and you're not familiar with these types of games, Overwatch is basically them holding their shot. So they've got their finger on the trigger, they're raring to go, they're well fed, and they're just waiting for something to cross their sight so that they can unload on it. Uh, people that have played XCOM will be very, very familiar with Overwatch, but sometimes it's easy when you're playing games like this to forget that like maybe some people might not know the terminology. Like They may not play a lot of games like this, but they may be interested in getting into it. And so anyways, the Overwatches have all been established. Look at that. Even my wounded guys are trying to squeeze off some rounds, even though they landed precisely zero shots. There's a nice little peppering. I'll take that. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Let them bleed, brothers. Unleash the blood bolters on their blood faces, all properly branded by Games Workshop. Only approved for use at Games Workshop applicable stores. Available now. Alright, and then because our Overwatch went so well, we're just going to finish it off. That guy's now down. Didn't really get to use my chainsword, guys. I would have liked to use my chainsword, guys, but sometimes you just don't get to use a chainsword, guy. I'm going to guess that this is out of range for these dudes. Yeah, definitely out of range. Definitely out of range. Put a little bit more fire right there. We'll decide what we want to do with the assault marines in just a minute. Apparently they have a clear line of fire right there, so that's good. Keep these guys back and protected. Uh, we will jump into right here, I think. I keep left-clicking, but I need to right-click for the abilities. Give me that. There we go. wonder if I can attack on diagonals. Either way, I'm about to try. I don't know if I can attack on diagonals, but we're about to learn. We can indeed attack on diagonals. I also like the way that you can move your characters while another character is handling his attack. That's one of my biggest annoyances in strategy games is I hate it when in a strategy game, like you tell somebody to attack and you can't interact with any of your other units or like move them or like queue up attacks or anything else until this animation is done. Nothing slows down a strategy game for me like that decision right there. And so I'm really happy to see that while our captain over here, our sergeant, while our sergeant was fighting with them, I was fully able to move my other units around, dude. I love that so, so, so much. Into battle, brothers. Oh. He's still alive. There can only be victory. Just uh, take care of that for me. He's got a nasty breathing problem. Take care of that for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. You can fight. I'll give you that. I don't know yet if you truly are scions of Sanguinius, or just some ruse of the Archmagos. Battle will decide. It always does. Cool, man. Immediate assistance required. Tyranids converge at the Volkscaster relay on the cell Veritas western edge. Form on me, brothers. It appears Balfour has decided she's not yet done with you. Alright, well then Balfour is in for a show because this bolter is all nice and warmed up. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. People are born, they live, they suffer, and die. Rarely of natural causes. Days prior to the fall of Cadia, Dante faced his greatest challenge. High Fleet Leviathan had broken through the Krypton Shield, and the Tyranids bore directly for the sacred homeworld of the Blood Angels. Baal. Sons of Sanguinius rallied from the far corners of the galaxy. Complete strangers died side by side, as brothers. Yet even this unprecedented congregation could not hold back the Great Devourer. In their darkest moment, the Blood Angels gathered around Lord Commander Dante. A last stand. They gave themselves to the Red Thirst and stood in defiance of the alien. Not for survival, for the chapter was doomed but for the honor of their sire, 
the great Angel Sanguinius. And then, pandemonium, the Cicatrix Maledictum opened and tore the galaxy in two. Time stretched, contorted. Demons of corn poured across the moon of Baal Primus, tearing at Xenos and Marines alike. Havoc reigned. But just as quickly as it appeared, the Cicatrix Maledictum contracted. It took with it both the demons and vast swathes of High Fleet Leviathan. In their place, the Indomitus Crusade appeared, helmed by the Avenging Sun himself, Primarch Rubute Gilliman. The Blessed Primarch didn't just bring relief to Baal. He brought with him the Primaris Space Marines, thousands bearing the mark of the Blood Drop. The Primaris were larger, stronger, more resilient than their first-born brethren. But to the Blood Angels, they represented a different kind of salvation. The promise of these super soldiers was of an improved gene line, more pure and closer to that of Sanguinius. Away from prying ears, Arch Magos' call whispered that they showed fewer signs of the flaws that plagued the great angel's blood. No more thirst beating at their hearts. No more armor to be painted black. A semblance of normality has since returned to Baal. The monolithic Indomitus Crusade prepares to leave. Commander Dante, now Lord Regent of half of the Imperium, works to heal his chapter and Baal of the trauma suffered at the hands of Leviathan. And on the moon Baal Secundus, Sergeant Carlion hurries to the aid of a sanguinary priest. Well, I like that they added animations and stuff on the in-between of the missions. It's really nice for scene setting. It occurs to me that this all probably sounds like Latin to somebody who's not into Warhammer 40k, but it would take so long to explain it all at this point that it's just like, uh, like, you, you can give the general overview idea of Warhammer 40k, but honestly, like, I feel like most people into 40k have been into it for a really, really long time, so like, all this just makes sense. You're like, yeah, crusade time! But for somebody that's not into Warhammer 40k, it strikes me that this would all be very, very disorienting and confusing. Uh, we have Venomous Corruption right here. Ooh, we have new units, huh? Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, I'll take another one of these guys for sure. Those guys are... Those, yeah, those guys are my bangers right there. Oh, I've got a... Do I have a point limit? So I've got 550 points right here. Um... I really, really, really like these aggressors. These aggressors are sick. I may have too many of them. I've got three aggressors, three normal marines, and I've got two guys that can be functional in melee. So, like, I feel okay with it. Um, I don't particularly know. It says I can have eight out of eight, but it doesn't say how many points I'm allowed. So I'm just going to assume that everything is fine. I mean, it says I have a new unit, but... So apparently after completing missions as well, we get HQ tokens that we can use to build our HQ upgrades. It also keeps track of how many, like, battles these guys have fought in, so it appears as though there's some kind of veterancy reward for them fighting and surviving in battles instead of dying. Uh, you'll see that the aggressors that I just added don't have it, but the ones that were in the last battle do. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. HQ Upgrade Center. What do we have? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. So we've got Tactical Precision. It's ability for Carleon. It's going to give him melee accuracy and ranged accuracy and armor piercing. Okay. How far in does this all go? Is it, like, literally just for our, our high-quality unit? That's what HQ stands for, by the way. HQ stands for high-quality. In the tabletop game, you can take, like, named characters and whatnot, and you can either embed them into other units or they can stand on their own, and they're kind of like legendary people of the various factions, or legendary creatures of the various factions, and so that's what HQ means. They tend to cost a lot of points, and you tend to kind of plan your strategy around them in a certain way. Uh, let's see, we've got Tactical Precision. Ooh, I like that right there, how that all fills in with blood right there. It's all remarkably on theme for the Blood Angels, who are all about blood and vampirism and all that kind of stuff. 
But yeah, blood is a big deal to the Blood Angels, as you might have guessed from their name. Uh, they have to drink human blood, otherwise they age and get old and wrinkly, and like bads, they get tired and worn out, and it's kind of like a process. They also have another genetic flaw called the uh, the Black Rage, where they freak out in combat and they go straight berserker mode. Uh, but anyways, I'll eat up the entire video just talking about the Blood Angels. Uh, we've got Savage Technique over here, we've got Assault Tactics. Okay, so that'll make my Assault Squads a little better. Battle Line Tactics will make my Intercessors a little bit better. We've got Assault Cannon Strafe. Ooh. I want that. Give that to me. I think I need two of the points. I don't think that I can get the Assault Cannon Strafey boys right now, but I want it real, real bad. I, 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 want, I, I want it. I, I desire it. I, I would like for it to be mine. So anyways, I like this little menu too. They've done a really, really good job with the art style of the game. I feel like they drew pretty heavily from the aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic design of Dawn of War 2 actually is really what it reminds me of in these little space sections. Alright, well let's just do Venomous the Corruption then. The makes these Primaris restless, eager. It is my duty to assess their potential here on the source of Balfora. Through combat, I intend to discover who these red armored giants truly are. Some of them take in the vistas of the salt like bored Taurus. There is little regard for the skies and sands that shaped our father. They will learn quickly, or Balfora will kill them. She does not tolerate laxity. I expect this priest we find will also be new to his role. There is no reason, other than youthful ignorance, to risk the Angel's blood on the swords. In these days following Leviathan's devastation, we are a chapter awash with fresh blood. Yeah, it happens from time to time. Like, a chapter will have a particularly nasty set of battles that they'll have to take care of in their corner of space and it'll deplete their numbers, and effectively they'll have to go into, like, recruiting mode. Like, it's kind of like a wash, like, it's kind of like different depending on the chapter, but anyways, they've got to have all the special organs and everything else implanted inside of them. You've got to spend like a gazillion years as a scout marine before you can become like a full-fledged marine. Like, it's just, it's a long process. Sergeant, with the relay offline, I was afraid only the Xenos had heard my calls for backup. Make haste, my reductor still has work to do. As you say, brother. The Blood Blades of the Eighth are ever eager to serve this sanguinary priesthood. Okay, so we've got to decide on our deployment here. Uh, we've got our aggressors in the back, we've got our riflemen in the front. I Actually, I'm okay with this. I would like for my, my melee units to kind of be in the front and be like a vanguard right there. We're 85 over limit. Okay, how can I get an easy 85 points back here? Actually, I think I might have to take out an aggressor. Yeah, we'll go ahead and reserve the aggressors. And then we will... Actually, that leaves us with 50 points. And there's not much we can do with 50 points. So I guess we'll just go with these guys right here. Flows in my veins. Oh, nice, dude. So we've got a... He's a bolt pistol, chain sword. He's got some kind of... He's got... Looks like he's got... Uh, Looks like he's got some extra hardware uh, strapped to his back, too. So we have the chain sword over here. We've got heal thy brother. Heals a non-vehicle ally with one tile for 35 HP. That's not bad. I'll take that. What's our goal right now? So we have to defend Aturo against the Tyranid Assault while he completes his work. Okay, and he needs to harvest Gene Seed. Gotcha. Uh, can I close this gap in any meaningful way? Assault Marines ready! It doesn't really look like I can close that gap in a meaningful way. Alright, well, Assault Marines are up and ready to go. Oh, Let's go ready. ahead and send them into combat. Victory for the blood plates. If... Alright, so we got another dude right Rebel there as ready. well. I mean, I feel like the worst case scenario here... Ooh, we've got them over there as well. Okay, so we're kind of like gleaning tactical information right now. It's a little bit problematic. 65% chance to hit right there against those Termagons. Uh, the Termagons have little guns, by the way. They have little bio guns. Uh, so we're going to have to watch out for that. These dudes over here, go ahead and chainsword them up. They'll probably take a little bit of attrition uh, from joining into melee. Actually, wow, they got schooled right there. That hurt us way more than it hurt them. Feels bad. That's a rip. Okay. Well, sons of Sanguinius, get on up here and see if you can 
alleviate some of these issues, dude. Uh, kill the melees first would be my advice. I'm not that worried about termagants. Like, termagants are not particularly shooty by comparison to space marines. And so, like, space marines should win in a shoot fight with termagants. Battle line squad ready. Hopefully there's not... Oh, my God, there's more of them over there. Okay. All right, get the fire support over there. And we're going to have to decide how we want to play this. It looks like we do have a bit of a funnel right there. We are the walls. We are the guns. Yeah, go ahead and go overwatch right there. I would like to fire my rocket launcher, dude. I don't think I've gotten to fire a rocket launcher yet, and I feel like firing a rocket launcher is something that I aspire to. Yes. Do that thing. We have to fire... There we go. Like, we have to shoot a grenade launcher at somebody, dude. Like, you can't have a shoulder-mounted missile pack grenade launcher and not fire it at, like, somebody, man. It's, it's a requisite part of what we're trying to do here. Uh, let's go ahead and finish off this squad, maybe? My vengeance will be final. <laughs> seems like he was kind of inefficient at that range. So yeah, it seems like it wants us to be a little bit closer for the bolt pistol. They're basically combat ineffective, so I'm going to spread this around over to here. If we can fish out, like, even one more kill on that side, it'll make them much less combat effective, too, uh, because damage is ultimately rolled by the number of people that are inside of here. And the game seems to be adhering fairly consistently to the tabletop rules. Uh, you guys go ahead and overwatch right there. Whatever happens, happens. Now we got to decide what we want to do with our librarian. I guess go over here. Do you have to interact right here? You do. Okay, well, interact. We've got one of the progenoid glands right there. Pretty sure the progenoid glands are what they use to make new space marines, so this is actually kind of an important task. Uh, go ahead and fire your bolt pistol at them. I do like how they focus fire on one enemy until that enemy's dead. Like, it would make the pistols and the single fire a lot less attractive if it spread the damage around randomly. Like, I really actually like the way that it targets one individual unit until it's dead, then moves on to the next one inside the squad. Like, I think that's a really, really, that's a really astute and that's a really good mechanic to guarantee that the pistols are somewhat useful. Uh, if they did not do that, I would argue that they are very, very unuseful. Uh, next unused unit. It looks like we're all good, so I'll end the turn right there. And then we will take our reaction. Hey, pistoled him down. Very nice. Looks like they're strong pushing to that side. One kill fished out over there. Would have very much preferred to get more done, but the miniguns did okay over here. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Like I said, termagants are not particularly shooty. And so, like, they're kind of just there to harass. I'm not that worried about Termagants. Yeah, like, our, our defense should cover us for the most part from them. Okay, we'll have to babysit these Assault Marines a little bit further because they're getting a little bit scuffed, but they'll be all right. Uh, let's go ahead and get him moving. I go where I am needed. We're going to use him as a flanking force over on this side. I don't know if the Termagants get to return fire. They didn't last time, but who knows. Uh, go ahead and bolt pistol on him. Very nice. He has two AP, so he can do it again. Good. I actually am pleased with that result. Uh, so these guys right here are going to be a prime target for melee. Uh, these guys right here are going to get ate up by melee because they have no melee defense to be spoken of. Uh, Termagants definitely do not like making base contact. They would prefer not to. And then over here, I should be able to have you finish them off. Very nice. Well done. And then we'll move up. I assume they're going to spawn more on me somewhere. Uh, you guys, I wonder if I get like a, a high ground bonus for firing. Let's find out. Oh, there is an optimal range there, as denoted by the the saturation of the targeting symbol. 
And so there was 45% chance to hit on them, 75 right there. So there is an optimal distance that we're trying to fire from. And it looks like in the case of this ability, it's actually like right in front of us. Good to know, good to know. All right, well then get on up in there and blast that enemy that is right in front of us, brother. Brother, the Xenos have come to Balfora to die and bleed upon its soil. Well done, brother. Lay the Temagon slow. Mm, they can get a shot off from over here. It won't be the most effective shot. Let's go ahead and get the frontline marines over here. You guys have already done your duty, so that's fine. Tee hee, duty. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and fire off a round right here, even though our accuracy is bad. It's okay. We'll make up for our accuracy being, being bad by applying extra volume. That's uh, the way that I like to do it anyways. Like, who needs accuracy when you have volume, dude? It's completely and totally unnecessary. There's another squad of termies. Okay. Looks like we have a couple options how we want to do this. I think coming down this slope, grabbing that, then looping back. Well, that's actually a longer walk. I think maybe it depends if there's actually a path right here. I don't know if that's going to be passable terrain. It's hard to say from right here. Like, this is definitely an intended path. That right there, that little deer trail, I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Hmm. I await their mistake. I do like that when you end your turn, if anybody has AP remaining, they auto overwatch. Like, that's actually a really, really good mechanic as well. Like I said, like, I was really happy when I heard that Slytherin got the IP for Warhammer 40k, because Slytherin is a really reliable strategy company. Like, they know what they're doing. Uh, their games tend to be very, like, granular, and they started out with, like, very simple strategy games when it came to the visual design of things, but, like... Their games have always had kind of like depth there and like things to figure out. And so I figured they'd do a good job with the turn-based corner of the GW Nebulous. Uh, we'll harvest the gene seed from right there off that dead marine. So like, they like to fire like three spaces away is what they like to do. Yeah, go ahead. I think they've got partial cover right there looking at it. It's hard to say. Seem to chew them up pretty good, though. I mean, go ahead and start clearing the way on that side. I think we should be able to finish these dudes off from here. I think they also have, like, an altitudinal advantage right there, which may affect things. Actually, it doesn't look like it does. I think it's just optimal ranges, because even though they're uphill from us, we got a 75% chance right there, just as long as we were inside of our optimal range. Uh, go ahead and put the heavy boys out front. They can burn up their AP moving. Jump jet sky, boys, brothers. get n yeah, get nooked in over here. Just kind of get tucked in, and I'll kind of use you to flank and move you around as necessary. Uh, you don't need that AP, so get you moving. We'll start pushing in this direction, just to clear. They shall not pass. I probably should have fiddled with all my facings, but like I don't really care, dude. Oh goody, we got some bigger boys over here. Yeah. Things are going to get a tiny bit more interesting, me thinkies. The blood of Sanguinius flows in my veins. Okay, so it does look like they can pass from over there. So, like, I think ideally what I would like to do is I would like to get Heavy all my aggressors support. out front. We'll put the Marines in kind of behind them. You guys watch this Moving. flank just in case. You kind of fall in in the back as well, and then Sarge, you're right up there and behind everybody. We are the sons of Sanguinius. So facing wise, I do like the Overwatch is actually kind of nuanced too, although you might not notice it. Uh, the the Overwatch is it lets you pick your own range at which you will start firing. This is a feature that gets slept on by a lot of strategy games. And so, like, I was really annoyed by a game recently because you could Overwatch, but they would fire their Overwatch if they had, like, even a 1% like chance of hitting, basically. And, like, I was talking about how it'd be really nice if you could set a baseline threshold for where they will fire at, basically. Like, unless you have a 50% chance to hit, don't fire. You know what I mean? 
And so this game accounts for that by allowing you to set your own range for your Overwatch, which means that obviously you're going to try to pick the optimal range every single time that you do it so that you maximize your hit chance. It's one of those little nuanced, understated things that the game does that's also very, very smart. So far, I'm pleased with it. This is Warhammer 40k Battle Sector. I haven't seen a whole lot to complain about. I think that the voice acting is good. It's cheesy and it's campy and it goes exactly to what 40, 40k actually is. The visual design of the game is fantastic and you can see that they've taken a lot of cues uh, from stuff like Dawn of War 2 and like Mechanicus, like games that did the imagery of Warhammer 40k like very, very well. The backing soundtrack also seems to harken back to sort of Mechanicus, which was all about organs and choirs and stuff like that, although by no means is that exclusive just to uh, Mechanicus. Let's take a look at the options menu, because I know you guys will want to take a look at that. Inside the sound menu, it looks like we do have a pretty good split right here with our sound mixer between voice, sound effects, and music. Everything a growing boy needs. Uh, subtitles during cinematics, thumbs up. Uh, subtitles for barks, on or off, thumbs up right there as well. Good option. Uh, the camera, we can fiddle around with the zoom speed, the pan speed, the rotate speed. We can say whether or not we want the game to pan at the screen's edge. We can invert the pitch if we want to, the yaw and the zoom as well. Uh, we also have inside the graphics menu, you can pick your resolution. Uh, you can turn on motion blur. I didn't even know that it was on, so it must be a very, very subtle motion blur. Uh, V-Sync, obviously good if you get a lot of tearing. Uh, you can choose what frame rate you would like the game to actually be locked at. Uh, which is a very, very important thing for guys like me that record the game because a lot of softwares do not like having an unlocked frame rate. Uh, we have the UI particle effects can be enabled or disabled, but that seems to be about all there is in there right there. Hide unit banners. That's good because I actually kind of wanted to fold those up and not have to do it every single mission. Show detailed enemy information. Actually, I kind of like that too. I'm going to turn that on. Show detailed battle information during enemy turn. Cool. And then there's also rebindable controls for all the people that are looking for that, whether or not you play a Zerti or whatever your favorite hand configuration is on the keyboard. Because it's all rebindable, you're good to go. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Warhammer 40k Battle Sector, which I actually think is pretty cool. We've only done like the first two missions so far, but I am glad to see that the first two missions diverged from the demo that they gave out about four months ago, three months ago. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I think the graphics are great. They're presentable. I think the sound effects are really well designed, which for a Warhammer 40k game I think is incredibly important, making sure that a bolter sounds like a bolter, a chainsword sounds like a chainsword. It's all part of the immersive effects. Uh, the music's great. The voice acting is deliciously campy, just like it should be. I don't really have much else to complain about. I will see you guys all tomorrow with whatever coverage comes up. Bye!